There's a lot of good stuff to get at Walmart, but it ain't as fun as church. Hallelujah, Jesus. Mm, praise the Lord. I, I thought about breaking out in song. The wife had me at Walmart the other day. We weren't at the normal Walmart, and I got to singing, and it was good to me. Folks was looking at me as I was going by, and I said, well, Lord, I don't know. We're going to have church in here, or we're going to shop. I, I don't know. I don't know. My wife said, come on. I said, okay. Let's go. I guess that answered my prayer, Lord. Okay, all right. And we moved on down the aisle. Praise God. It is good to have you here this morning. We're going to be in Numbers, Numbers chapter 13. If you want to go ahead and turn there this morning, I'm coming out of the New Living Translation today. Numbers chapter 13. Praise the Lord. And we're going to start with verse 25. Uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. Fourth book of the Bible. Old Testament. Ooh, we're going old school this morning. Hellfire and brimstone. No, okay. Okay, I'm just, just saying, just saying. It's all right, it's all right. Hallelujah, Jesus. If you got it, say amen. amen. All right, praise the Lord. And of course, it'll be up here on the board for you if you need it. We'll read a couple of verses and then we will pray. It says, uh, after exploring the land for 40 days, the men returned to Moses, Aaron, and the whole community of Israel at Kadesh in the wilderness of Paran. They reported to the whole community what they had seen and showed them the fruit they had taken from the land. This was their report to Moses. Oh, praise God, we're going to stop and pray before we get into that. We're going to stop and pray before we get into that report. Praise God. Pray with me over this service. Dear Lord God, we thank you so much for all that you have done. Lord God, we thank you so much for all that you have blessed us with. God, we thank you so much that we're able to be here this morning in this place, Lord God, worshiping you, Lord God, spending time with you, God, hearing your message, God. Oh, Lord, I thank you so much, God, that you have protected us, God, that you have kept us safe, Lord, that you have allowed us to be here. Lord God, I thank you that your presence is here this morning, God. I thank you that you are here this morning, God. Oh, Lord, I pray that you would do all that you want to do, Lord. Have your way fully and completely, Lord God. Encourage people, God. Change hearts and lives today, God. Convict, Lord God. Break the chains, Lord God, that bind us, Lord God. Bring about salvation, Lord. Whatever needs to happen, God. I pray, Lord God, that it would happen today, Lord, according to your will. And we ask it, God, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. So we're, we're talking here. Give you a little backstory before we go forward. I, I hope we all know the story, but if we don't, it's okay. Jump on into Numbers when you get home and read it. But the children of Israel are getting ready to go into the promised land. And as they're wandering away from Egypt, getting ready to go to the promised land, they've, they've come straight through from Egypt, and they have been rescued by mighty miracles. Mighty miracles. Then they, they came out of Egypt and they got rescued again at the, at the Red Sea by mighty miracles. Amen. Mighty miracles. And then they wandered on out into the woods heading towards, or the wilderness, heading towards the promised land, the land that is flowing with milk and honey, the good land, the thing that God wanted to give them. And so before they went in, they sent in a scouting, a scouting team. They took the leaders from each of the tribes. They took a leader from each spot. There was 12 tribes, and they sent them on. Twelve dudes went to the land, this good land that God promised to give them. And when they came back, this is the report they gave. And so they've come back to Moses, to Aaron, to the rest of the whole community. And I, I want to understand the community was not just a small group of people. The community was not just a little old town of Spring Hope. The community was a ton of folks. Okay? You understand? And they came back and they reported to the community what they had seen and showed them the fruit they had taken. They had grabbed stuff from the land so people could see with their own eyes. Said the grapes, they had to put it on poles and carry it in because it was, it was such, a, such a wonderful thing. This was the report, verse 27. This was their report to Moses. We entered the land you sent us to explore, and it is indeed a bountiful country, a land flowing with milk and honey. Here is the kind of fruit it produces. But, uh-oh, I don't like that word. But the people living there are powerful, and their towns are large and fortified. We even saw giants there, the descendants of Anak, 
The Amalekites live in the Negev and the Hittites and Jebusites and Amorites live in the hill country. The Canaanites live along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea and along the Jordan Valley. But Caleb tried to quiet the people as they stood before Moses. He says, let's go at once and take the land. We can certainly conquer it. A man of faith stepped up and said, hush, crowd. We can do this. Let's go right now. Let's not delay. Let's do it right now. Let's act now. But the other men, verse 20, uh, 31, but the other men who had explored the land with him disagreed. This bad report. King James right there says evil report. Mm. So they spread this bad report about the land among the Israelites. The land we traveled through and explored will devour anyone who goes to live there. All the people we saw were huge. We even saw giants there, the descendants of Anak. Next to them, we felt like grasshoppers, and that's what they thought too. Now, I'd just like to know in this scouting party, rolled up into this promised land that they're getting ready to come in there and conquer and take over and just either destroy everybody in it or run them out. I want to know which one of those people that they thought were enemies that they walk up to and say, hey man, um, when you look at me, what's the first insect that comes to your mind? <laughs> they're spreading this bad report. They're spreading rumors. They're spreading their opinion. Uh-oh, watch it. They're spreading things that technically go against what the Lord told them to do. Come on. Praise God, there was two that stood up for righteousness. There were two that stood up and said, no, we need to do what God tells us to do. Follow me on into chapter 14. <clears throat> it says, then the whole community began weeping aloud, and they cried all night. Their voices rose in a great course of protest against Moses and Aaron. If only we have died in Egypt, or even here in the wilderness, they complained. Why is the Lord taking us to the country or this country only to have us die in battle? Oh, talking about faith. Ooh, they were speaking good old faith there, weren't they? they was just, I just had so much confidence in the Lord there, God. Oh, come on. Mm. Our wives and our little ones will be carried off as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to return to Egypt? Then they plotted amongst themselves, let's choose a new leader and go back to Egypt. Wow. Wow. Oh, we're going to get to this here in a minute. Let's finish it. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces or fell face down to the ground before the whole community of Israel. Two of the men who had explored the land, Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, tore their clothes. They said to all the people of Israel, the land we traveled through and explored is a wonderful land. And if the Lord is pleased with us, he will bring us safely into that land and give it to us. It is a rich land flowing with milk and honey. Do not rebel against the Lord and do not be afraid of the people of the land. They are only helpless prey to us. They have no protection, but the Lord is with us. Don't be afraid of them. But the whole community began to talk about stoning Joshua and Caleb. Come on. But the whole community began to talk about stoning Joshua and Caleb. Then the glorious presence of the Lord appeared to all the Israelites at the tabernacle. The Lord said to Moses, how long will these people treat me with contempt? This is God speaking here. Will they never believe me? Even after all the miraculous signs I have done among them, I will disown them and destroy them with the plague. Whew. Then I will make you into a nation greater and mightier than they are. And of course, we know that God eventually spares them. Finish reading that chapter. Moses goes as a, a great intercessor for these people. And God, God doesn't destroy them. He causes problems. A bunch of them die. Things happen. And if you read on, they end up wandering in the desert for 40 years. And they don't get to go into the promised land. Of the 10, of the people, they don't go. Only the two, Joshua and Caleb, get to go into this promised land. The two that spoke with a good report. The two that spoke up and said, no, God is with us, let's go now. Those two got to go in. 
Matter of fact, Joshua got to lead them in as their leader. Wow, talking about a promotion. So here we are today. Anybody feel any similarities to what we're going through right now? Amen. Oh, good. Maybe I won't have to preach that long. <laughs> I hope you got the message. Let's all go home. Here we are in the midst of a mess. In the midst of an absolute mess. We're going to start back with this uh, coronavirus. And then move on into the protest. I just think it's wonderful and, and awesome in the ways of, of our world that we tell everybody to stay home is too dangerous. And then we tell everybody to go out and, and speak up, right? I mean, is it stay home or is it go out? Is it, is it stay behind closed doors because it's dangerous or is it march in the streets? I don't know. But the thing I do know is this was their opportunity. The children of Israel had an opportunity to get into the promised land. And because they didn't trust God, because they didn't believe God, because they murmured and complained, because they, they saw with their eyes and not with the spirit, because they didn't have any faith, even though they were God's people, even though they had seen miracles, they chose not to believe. And in that, they didn't get a second chance. The opportunity passed them by. Are you hearing that this morning? The opportunity to stand up for God passed them by. And if you pay attention to the rest of the story, they even tried to say, okay, fine, we'll go take the land. And they put on their armor and they ran in there and, 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 and Moses and Aaron stops them and says, what are you doing now? God told you you're not going. Now if you try to go, they're going to defeat you. And sure enough, they didn't listen. They tried to go and take the land on their own and they got ran back. The enemy chased them with going back into the wilderness. I mean, it was a terrible scene. They were humiliated. So in the first instance, they didn't stand up for God. And then the second instance, when they had another opportunity to obey God. Wow, talking about just a stubborn and messed up people. Reminds you of anybody? <laughs> Reminds you of anybody called Americans? <laughs> Come on. There's an opportunity happening right now. And it's been happening since government has came against the church way back way back at the beginning of the year when things began to happen and they said no it's too dangerous for you to come in and we stand up and say but our constitution says we we have the right you can't prohibit us according to our constitution according to the laws that you claim are our freedoms given by God you shall not pass any laws that say that restrict how we worship Oh, but they did. And we had Christians left and right closing down churches left and right. Now, if you fall into a category, you fall into an age group, they said it's more dangerous for certain ones. Stay home. Hey, fine. But what about the ones that wanted to come out and worship? What about the ones that wanted to say, hey, if God is for me, who can be against me? Hey, I have a God that's bigger and greater than anything. I'm going to take my chances with God on my side than with science on my side, with your uh, uh, bad report saying that if I'm uh, autoimmune disease, I have three of them. If I'm overweight, I, that's me. If I'm of a certain age, eh, that's kind of I'm on the board. But you're going to die. You get you're going to die. No, that's okay. I'm going to take my chances with God. I'm going to take my chances. We had an opportunity. Now that opportunity has kind of passed us by. Now we're in the protest opportunity. We have an opportunity in this mess to, to say, no, I, I am who I am. And I'll reach out and be with you. And together we can try to stand up for Christ. Because the only thing that's going to change anyone in this world is Christ. Amen. The only thing that's going to fix it is the love and the grace and the mercy of Jesus Christ. Amen. The only thing that can, can just squash hatred, the only thing that can bring about forgiveness, the only thing that can make people forget about the past and, and move forward Amen. is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And we have an opportunity when it comes by to, 
hold up our sign, Jesus is the answer. Our gospel to say, no, this is the only way, the truth and the life. His name is Jesus and he's the word. Amen. But if we don't pay attention, it'll pass us by. If we cower in our homes, it'll pass us by. We have Christians today, believers today, that have seen the same miracles that everybody else has seen. They were raised in a church where things happened. They've seen or experienced a miraculous thing in their life. And yet they refuse to step out and step up when it's their time. Well, this, is, this, is, this isn't my fight. Really, it's not. It's your, you, you, you can fight. You can fight the fight. It's your generation's fight. My generation, I, I'll, I'll stay over here. You, you, go, you go fight this one. It's your. It's for your gender to fight this one. My gender, I'll, I'll stay over here. You fight the fight. I, I'll support you. You can do it. Come on. I, I, will, I will liken it to this. I will liken it to an athlete that goes to practice every day, that works out every day, that, that disciplines his body every day. He's in shape. He can hit the three-point shot or the free throws, or he can run the 40-yard dash in under four seconds, or he can throw a football 50 yards down the field and hit the target every time. He, he's on point. And he practices and sits. Then when it's time to get in the game, the coach says, come on, let's go play the game. Nah. <laughs> now that's okay. You know, I might mess up. You know, I might look silly. You know, somebody might get offended because I put on a, a Patriots jersey or a Giants jersey or whatever team he plays for or a, or a, a New York Knicks or a, whatever. A Duke jersey, we'll get close to home. NC State jersey, come on. Somebody might get offended because of the, the uniform I'm wearing and somebody might get offended because of the, the stance that I take. And so, you know, I'll just sit on the bench, coach. You, 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 you can put somebody else in. You can put somebody else in. I can only imagine after two or three games, the coach is going to say, why are you here? What are you practicing for? Why am I paying to be on my team? When it's time to get in the game, you miss the opportunities. You let them pass you by. And when the game's over, no matter how many free, free throws you hit in practice next week, it doesn't change the outcome of the game. The opportunity's over. Monday night football on Tuesday does you no good to practice on Tuesday for Monday night's game. Monday night's already passed you by. Right? Right. Then on top of that, we have an enemy. We have an enemy, an adversary. His name is Satan, Lucifer, the devil. And you know, he's out there playing regardless. I, 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 I'll say it, I'll bring it real close to home. I, I went to Bun, go Wildcats. Huh? Come on, yeah, amens, no? Okay. <laughs> All right, go Wildcats. Our arch rival was Lewisburg. You know, no matter what happened during the season, we only usually had to play them once unless there was a playoff game, then we maybe might meet them again in the playoffs. But you know, we had one opportunity to show that we were better than them. But you know, even when we weren't playing Lewisburg, they were playing people. They were increasing their knowledge of the game. They were increasing their sports, their activity, their athleticism, their strategy. They were still in the game fighting someone else. They were increasing their win record. Their seed at the end of the season in the playoffs. Whether we played them or not, they were still playing the game. And they were our enemy, 
arch rivals. You understand the devil's in the game. The devil's playing this thing whether you or not. And he's playing to win. He uses things like our skin color. He uses things like our political values, our, our left wing, right wing, this middle road, whatever. He uses things like our gender, our jobs. There's so many fights going on right now. Get in the game. Or else you end up like the Israelites and the moment will pass you by. And God said, no, no, not one of you people are getting in. They missed an opportunity for the promised land. Do you get that this morning? They had one chance. They all their life led up to that moment. Time to stand up for God. But in that moment, they didn't stand up for God and they missed it. Then they didn't get into the promised land. Not only that, the last 40 years of their life was tough. They wandered the desert for 40 years. Now God took care of them. Their sandals didn't wear out. Their clothes didn't wear out. He gave them manna from heaven. He gave them uh, meat when they wanted meat. But there was murmuring. There was complaining. There was drama. There was snakes. There was pestilence. There was, uh, uh, the earth opened up and swallowed a bunch of them and closed back down. There was, uh, there was all kinds of things. There was an enemy that come against them every time they turn around. Can we go through your land? No? Okay. Now you're going to fight us? Lord, please deliver us from this battle. Can we go through your land? No? Now you're going to fight us? Lord, please deliver us from this battle. Every time you turn around, they was fighting somebody. Somebody was coming against them. We tried to curse them from hilltops. It was all kinds of mess they went through. And then eventually they that generation died out, and God kept his promise, and they, he led them on into the promised land through Joshua and Caleb, the two that stood up for Christ, the two that stood up for God, the two that stood up for righteousness amongst the people that wanted to stone them. Think about that. When was the last time somebody wanted to stone you because you told them about Jesus? Really? We, we live here in the absolute greatest country in the world. We have freedoms unlike anyone else where anybody can say what they need to say. Your opinion can be put out there and blasted all over the internet, all over the news, in your front yard, uh, on, on TV. If you got money, you can buy a spot on TV and run yourself an ad for uh, uh, men's socks. I mean, it don't matter. Whatever you want to do. This water right here, we're going to sell this water. It's the best water around. This is my opinion. It's the best water around. We want you to buy this water. It doesn't matter. Whatever you want to do, you can do. And the worst thing that comes against us is people, keyboard warriors on the internet. Who cares? We get people fussing at us. Well, you know, I'm not going to be your friend anymore. You know, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that you won't be my friend, but I'm trying to show you the way to love. I'm trying to show you the way to peace. I notice you're angry all the time. Jesus will give you peace that surpasses all understanding. I notice you're, you're bitter about something. Let me, let me come in and help you and show you that there's a better way. Look at my life. Look at me. What did Paul say? Mimic me as I, as I mimic the Lord. Follow in my footsteps as I follow Christ. Come on. Be that to somebody. Amen. Bridge that gap. Amen. There's people in America that still haven't heard the gospel. Amen. There's people in America that still don't go to church on Sunday morning. Amen. There's people in America that don't believe flat out, just don't believe in God. Amen. You have an opportunity today. You have an opportunity to fight against racism. You have an opportunity to fight against uh, uh, inequality from the government, from uh, stuff coming down that, that's squashing our constitutional rights. You have the, the, the opportunity to do that just about any year of the, 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 the world. Pick a year. Pick a year, and we can pick out a, an opportunity that you could have fought that fight that year. Something happened during your lifetime, you said, well, you could have fought there. You could have fought that one or that one or that one or that one. But, you know, daily... 
Daily you can fight the fight of spreading the gospel. Daily you can fight the fight of the enemy. When people get to heaven, when you get to heaven, will it be, well done, my good and faithful servant? Not my good and faithful American. Not my good and faithful Christian. Not my good and faithful friend. But my good and faithful servant. It's time to get in the game and to serve our Lord. Not just sit back and steadily listen, steadily receive, steadily get, steadily get, steadily get. You're going to get indigestion is what you're going to get. We need to be full of the Holy Ghost. We need to be full of the Word of God. We need to be full of worship and praise and prayer. But there comes a time in our life when we've got to get it out. We've got to release it on this world. We are to be servants of High. Or will he say, depart from me, I never knew you, you do whatever iniquity. And the response, if you know that scripture, said, Lord, Lord, didn't we do these things in your name? He says, depart from me. Depart from me, I never knew you. Wow. But Lord, didn't we come to church and see miracles happen in your name? Yeah. Depart from me, I never knew you. You doer of iniquity. Oh, I know this is a fun message this morning. I just hear the amens and see the smiles on your beautiful faces. You're just loving it this morning. But we have an opportunity. Christ is the only thing. And we have it. We have the answer. We have the answer. That's right, and they don't. They being the unsaved world, they being the people burning places to the ground for whatever reason, they don't have Christ. We have the answer. It is, it is our time. It is our time to step up and say, hey, get right before it's too late. Let me show you a better way. Let me, let me go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Sure, God's given me all these gifts in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and it's for the embodiment or the, the uplifting and encouragement of the saints. But let me show you an even better way. It's called love. It's in 1 Corinthians 13. Love. 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 Conquers all fears. Love. Bridges all gaps. Love. Keeps no right of wrong. Love. Oh, praise God. Love. I challenge you, church, while you're out there shopping for your groceries at Food Line or shopping for your whatever at Burger King or at, at, at Mimos or uh, getting tires down there at Wards, which isn't Wards anymore, I don't know the name of it now, but down there getting flowers from Miss Mays, whatever it is that you're doing, buying something at the Walmart for Father's Day is coming up soon, Father's Day, hey, Father's Day. Anyways, <clears throat> I challenge you. Let God speak to you as you're in those stores. Let the Holy Spirit guide you to the right aisle. Amen. Say, Lord, I, I don't need nothing on the makeup aisle. Oh. All right, Lord, what are we praying for today? What are we doing here today, God? Because if you're not paying attention, those opportunities will pass you by. You have the answer to eternal life. You have the answer to forgiveness. You have the answer to salvation. You have the, the keys to peace that surpasses all understanding. Amen, bro. And as we tell our little kids in the Sunday school class, we don't, we don't hide it under a bushel. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Oh. Right? Amen. Hide it under a bushel? No, I'm going to let it shine. When you're watching the news, when you're watching YouTube, when you're watching all the mess that's going on in this world, I 
challenge you to let your heart be open. Let your heart be open. It'll make you angry. It'll frustrate the mess out of you. But if you let your heart be open, God will God'll begin to change your own heart. And he'll tell you what to do about it. He'll, he'll put a name on your heart to go see. A name for you to go call. A text you need to send out. Hey, I'm, I'm thinking about you. Just want to let you know I'm here for you if you need anything. He'll begin to fill your heart with love and melt away all that frustration and that anger. I'm telling you. Last but not least, I, I, I say this with the utmost conviction. My, my wife will tell you, sometimes I get after that news and it's just, oh, I go from one story to the next to the next and it's just frustrating. And I just, I just get more stirred up and more stirred up and more stirred up and more stirred up. Woo! So I take it my own personal conviction. I read this word. I read this word. I study this word. But if we put it on a, a scales, if we put it on a, a set of old balances, is that news, and that news is way, way heavier. There's way much more news. There's way much more mess putting in my spirit than I'm putting in my heart and my mind compared to the Word of God. Of all people, I tell you guys, you need to watch and pray. Watch means be informed. Watch means pay attention to what's going on in this world. Watch means look out for the signs of the times because the end is right around the corner. However, disclaimer, but... Sometimes you need to turn it off. Sometimes you need to put it down. Sometimes you need to make sure, hey, have I read my Bible today? Have I spent more time with God praying about this situation than I have fussing about this situation? Amen. Have I spent more time asking God, Lord, what do you want me to do instead of fussing about everything else everybody else is doing wrong? <laughs> Lord, is there something I can do to step out there and be the light in the middle of the darkness. Church, this opportunity passed by. They didn't get in. The, the, the Israelites, the ones that came back with a bad report, the ones that believed their bad report, they did not make it. Yeah, they were God's people. Yeah, God kept them throughout the wilderness, but their opportunity was lost. It was missed. Church, I, I challenge you in all this to look at your own life. What are you doing? Look back yesterday. What did you do to spread the gospel yesterday? Okay, last week, what did you do to spread the gospel last week? Last month, we were all at home, stuck in our houses, coronavirus. Okay, what did you do last month? Sent out a bunch of emails and tweets. You got up there, you made a video, did something, right? No? Okay, I don't know. What did you do? The month before that. The month before that. I won't save you, Pastor. Okay, I'll give you an out for that one. <laughs> What did you do? Those opportunities are gone. They're past. But you know what? You have an opportunity today. Amen. And tomorrow, and the next day, and the next week, and the next hour, and the next month, and the next... You have an opportunity. Get your eyes open. Lift your head up. Get your head out of the sand. Look for these opportunities. Because I promise you, if you do... God will point them out. God will point them out. Next thing you know, you'll be in, in Walmart. Lord, Lord, is now the God. Lord, I just, I can't breathe. Lord, I don't know that I can do this. Yes, go, speak. Do you know Jesus? Go, speak, ask. 
I'll give you one the other day. I'll tell you this no, I'll, I'll stop. I was at Walmart. I don't know who I was with. I was at Walmart, and I'm out there in the pharmacy, and I don't know, we're getting some medicine. And, and I, I think, yeah, yeah, I had my new Life Temple uh, polo on. And I'm standing in line with the family. We're waiting to get our medicine from see at Walmart. And I'm, you know, I'm looking around and like, you know what I mean? I get that second glance. My eyes connect and they connect again. And Lord, okay, God. You know, because you know you have plans. God will mess your plans all up. You know what I'm saying? God will mess your plans all up. Sometimes it takes a minute and sometimes it takes an hour. You, you don't understand. When the Lord leads you, you go. You just go with it. And I was with family and I wasn't driving. You know what I'm saying? It was one of those things. Like, well, we're messing up everybody's day to day. <laughs> okay. So I ease on over to the counter. And, uh, hey, how you doing? Fine, fine, fine. I said, uh, I just want to tell you Jesus loves you. Oh, dude. She looked up at me. She began to cry. What? I just want to let you know Jesus loves you. It'll be okay. Is there anything I can pray for you today? Is there anything you want me to pray about today? <laughs> she looked at my shirt. She looked at me. She said, you're a pastor, ain't you? <laughs> I said, yeah, yeah. She said, no, but I really needed to hear that. She said, no, I, I, we're not praying for anything today, but I, I really, you don't understand, I, I really needed to hear that. I said, okay. I said, it'll be okay. God loves you. He sees you. It'll be okay. She's steadily crying. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. And it's in those moments that I praise God I was there. I don't know who else didn't do their job. I wonder if there was somebody, if I'd have kept my mouth shut, I would have said, no, I ain't going over there. She don't look like me. She ain't the same color as me. She ain't the same uh, uh, ethnicity. She ain't the same background. She works at a pharmacy. I don't know nothing about drugs. I'm a pastor. I, I got my shirt on. Good Lord. I gotta, uh, if it goes wrong, I don't want anybody to know where I'm from. You know, I don't want them to cover it up. What if, what if, I'm, what if, what if I say, no, just go. Just go. If I wouldn't have said what I did, if I wouldn't have said what I said, I don't, who, who knows? What was on her mind? You don't, you don't know? You don't know the depths, the links that God has gone through to get you where you are so you'll be in that moment yeah. to speak those words. telling you guys, do not miss the opportunity that God has given us. And when it's on a big grand scale of a stage like it is right now in the news, then there's opportunities. People are looking for a conversation. People are looking to talk. People want to know what's going on. People are asking. When coronavirus hit, they wanted to know, is this the end? Is this the leg? Is this, is this it? Is this over? Is, is this the rapture? Did I miss something? Is this one of the, the big things that God is pouring out? Is he going to kill us all? They were looking for answers. They wanted to know. Now in the midst of it all, they were looking for peace. They're looking for acceptance. They're looking for love. They're looking for validation. They're looking for something. I know I'm missing it. There's something I'm missing. I need it. Give it to me, please. And if you just have that conversation, you just spend that time. Guys, if there's anything that you need today, the altars are open. If there's anything that you came to church looking to receive today, the altars are open. God is able, willing, and ready <laughs> to do a miracle in your life. As we've seen over and over and over and over again. It's to move. He really does. I think one, sometimes it's some of his favorite things to just wait until it just seems impossible and then jump right in and do something about it. So there's no other thing, no other, uh, nothing we can give anything credit to but God. It had to be. It was a miracle. Anyhow, if you're not saved, if you need salvation, 
If you're not right with God, if you got saved and you don't know if you're still saved, if you messed up somewhere, you backslid this week or you sinned really bad and you don't know if you're covered and you're afraid if something were to happen to you on the ride home, and you don't know where you'd spend eternity, come get it right with God. Son, give me a little music back there. Turn it down slow and low.